is Miguel Sano. He goes after the first pitch. This is trouble down the right side. If it's fair, it is a fair ball. Bautista gets it as he has to deal with the fan. Bautista had a chance to make a throw on Sano, and that's why he's disappointed. That fan reached over to get the souvenir, and Bautista was thinking about wheeling and throwing to second. And he had a shot to get the guy. Well, that was a costly souvenir for that fan. It cost him his seat as he interfered with ball on the field of play. Miggy drives one to left field. Schwarber is on the run. He turns. It's gone. Back to back home runs for the Tigers. What a start to this series. It sounds like a home game here. This shows the importance of Miguel Cabrera in the lineup, what he can do. Just energizing this crowd, which almost seems like a hometown crowd, like you mentioned. Hamill has thrown strikes in all seven pitches. The Tigers have swung at seven strikes. They've gone back to back home runs, fifth set of back to back home runs this season for Detroit. And now Joe Madden came out, and we'll see what he's going to challenge here. Jerry Davis is the crew chief, the home plate umpire. There's Joe Madden. He quickly came out after that home run. Joe is seeing that ball went through the basket as opposed to over the wall and into the basket. I'm thinking to call interference and send Cabrera back to second. So Mickey does not get a home run. Joe Madden wins the challenge. It'll be a two base hit and not a homer. Down the left field line for Hannigan. It is falling fair and headed towards the corner. Bogarts heads for third and the fan touched it he interfered with the ball that's going to be costly for the Red Sox Bogarts will be brought back to third base as a fan interferes and now they're checking to see whether or not they're going to challenge this or not and reaching out on a ball down left field line and oh he definitely has definitely. something to do with that that's just going to be a double runner will not score no way. Although you never know what would have happened if he didn't touch it. And it's up to the umpire's discretion as to where they place the runners. And I guess John Farrell's argument would be either way Bogart scores, at least that's what he's thinking about. We'll see as he's out there talking to the umpires. He's not officially asked for a challenge here. To me, he could say, judge that, that he could have scored on this ball, but my guess is they won't. Crew chief is Jeff Nelson, who he is talking to. I mean, what goes into this? You're talking about Bogarts. If Bogarts is you know, as the, fast as can be, that the goes. Placement of Bogarts. Right. And then because he's fast, the player is fast, does that go into it? Where he was when right, it where hit he was glove. when the ball. Okay. Right. And right. could he have scored at that point? I mean, if like a Teixeira was <laughs> the runner, right? There's no way he would score. So the, the being the speed has to go into this, right? Right. The and they're not going to challenge anything. John Farrell going back to the dugout. And consequently, that fan will be ejected for interfering with the ball in play. We'll never know what would have happened if he didn't touch that ball. I had a feeling he would have scored. And a fly ball toward the line and left. Franklin coming over in a hurry. Foul ball. And a fan reaches over into the field of play. And so it was Gregorius is going to be out. Nectat with this with the second bare hand. Hey, I'm telling you what, this guy can flat out play. Made a great catch in the first inning. On a, uh, a one hopper bare hand, and then he takes this one right away from Nick Franklin. Well, hang on, hang on. Joe Girardi out talking with uh, John Hirschbeck, and the umpires are going to get together 
and have a little conference here. They're trying to get the Rays to come back out onto the field. The ground crew out there, they want to change out the bases, but everything's being put on hold for a second. Well, did he reach out over the wall and into the field of play? That's the question, because it was close. I'll tell you what, too, he used the, the left hand and the right hand. He, he's ambidextrous. I mean, that's that's borderline. I mean, Nick Franklin's going to catch that, but did, it, did he go past? Yeah, that's going to be uh, the determining factor here is Hirschback uh, breaks up their conference and again talks it over with Joe Girardi. And so they uh, want to take a look at that. So close. And here's the thing. I, I think an ejection hangs in the balance, right? Uh, one would think so. If they come back and rule that, that he reached over, then I mean, then you got to go. Yeah. So they're ruling on uh, <laughs> whether it's uh, an out, and if it is, then a potential ejection. <laughs> That's exactly right. I just like the fact that the guy made two heck. I mean, two great plays. With each with you know a different hand. So the play under review, and is that left hand reaching out over that uh, imaginary line that would project up? From the stands, left hand goes out, and I'm going to say that uh, from that point, that left hand is in the field of play. But we'll see what they say. Oh. I think the fans had an initial reaction because the uh, momentum carried Franklin's glove hand into the stands, but uh, the fan reached over that uh, imaginary line, and he is out. And he may be out of the stadium. Yeah. That, that may have been the call that got him ejected. So that's going to end the inning. The Yankees leave, too, after that review. And uh, they're going to call it a day down there. He's on his way out of here. He had to wait until <laughs> the call was made, and now they walk him out. 8-3 Rays. Nick Franklin says bye. <laughs> Drifting foul. Miller chasing after it. Miller collides, oh. and he can't make the catch. Catch. We'll take a look at it again. Yeah, that's a good call. That is a good call. Man clearly interferes. He was right there to make the catch. That's a good call. And it looks like they might want some further discussion about this. Looks like the replay gear has been brought out. Fortunately, what I'm looking at this is Brad, and fortunately he's okay because it looks as if he ends up hitting his chest right in the middle of the wall. That's his hip. He was on the ground for a few seconds. Glad to see him get up. Yeah. Well, Astros fans should never be allowed to the front row. <laughs> Take a look at his hip again as he slams into the wall. That's padded, but it's not that padded. No, it's not. And he's, he will feel that in the morning. He'll, he's, I was happy to see him get up and the call. Now the call stands. A.J. Hinch wants a little further explanation, but that is out number three. That ball is hit really well to left field. And Dahl makes the catch. Or no. 
Oh, it's gone. That kid, did he reach over the wall? That's what David Dahl saying. I'm going to take a look at this. I think. Yep, Walt's coming out. David Dahl gets to the wall as you're taught. That kid reached over. He reached and then, over the wall. And then he gloated. That's not going out. Yeah, I hope he gets kicked out for gloating. You're not supposed to show gloat. Gonna be close, but I, I don't think that was gonna go out. Oh, please, nothing would make me happier right now to reverse this on the kid. What was the name of the kid for the Yankees back in the day? Jeffrey yeah. Mayer. If it takes them that long to figure it out. They're probably saying it's an out or trying to figure, obviously, interference. They're going to award him a double. Ow. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> now now, now. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Charlie looked right at him and said, what do you got to say now? Oh, that's great. That kid's got a story for the rest of his life. the right call it is it is it's a, that's great well, I hope I hope David Dahl gets a chance to sign that baseball for the kid after the game that's hilarious hold on before you even throw him out of here let, let David sign the ball they're ejecting him with two with, <laughs> with one out in the ninth inning I wonder. I wonder if he ranks as you know. We'll get Elias Note, youngest kid to get ejected from a baseball game. <laughs> Do you know what? That's great. Yeah, there, there's a part of me that's like <laughs> it was over the top. He, I'm not big at barking at players, but that's fouled off. He will never forget. Around 5 of 11 in the ninth inning on July 30th when he's sitting out there in left field. Caught a baseball. Talk trash. See you, buddy. Smell you later. And got thrown out. <laughs> I hope we sit next to him on the 7 train going back to Manhattan. And a drive down the left field line. That is going to be a base hit. Battle around. In comes Turner. Here comes Gordon on a double by Hanley. And the Dodgers have some breathing room. They lead 5 2. So Harris gives up the hit. The runs are charged to Daniel Hudson. Who has now been charged with three? What well, was a 2 2 tie is now 5 2 Dodgers in the eighth. Breaking ball, Hanley went down to get it and pulled it into the left field corner. Rimo trying to catch up to it, but no chance. The ball looked like it was touched by a fan. And we will see now what that does to the runners. Kurt Gibson came out. That's such a thoughtless thing to do. Yeah, you drop it now, but you touched it. So the ball should be dead immediately. And that might take a run off the board. So we'll see how they decide. See if D. Gordon is sent back to third. So Gordon awaits the decision. The umpires are going to take a look. Definitely the fan touched the ball. No two ways about that. 
Big at bat for Dean. Nine pitches and a base hit to drive in a tiebreaker. All right. It looks like the umpires. Well, let's see. Are they sending Ramirez back to second? Arizona is questioning Laz Diaz. D. Gordon is still in the dugout. Kurt Gibson wants to make sure what they're going to do. Hanley's at second. And what about Gordon? Now, here comes Kurt. They're talking about, I think he's talking about first base. I think he wants Hanley Ramirez to be back at first. And Laz saying when the fan touched the ball, Ramirez was entitled to second base. I was just wondering if they were going to send Gordon back to third, but it doesn't look that way. 